This channel is not intended for children. Please kickstart responsibly. Hey everybody, welcome back to the RPG episode. We got all kinds of stuff so jam-packed. It's been a ridiculous spring and will continue to be so. Um, there's just all kinds of things coming out right now. People have been excited about uh, Chinese New Year being over and they just want to pump out the campaigns as quickly as they can. And uh, that's a good thing because everybody gets to find something hopefully that they will enjoy. So I hope as far as enjoyment goes, you are enjoying your weekend with all your summer, uh, sorry, not summer, but spring festivals that are going on this weekend. Uh, whatever your culture, or whatever um, requires that you celebrate, I hope you enjoy it. And uh, let's get started celebrating what happens in our role-playing games. First up, they decided to only have a five-day campaign, so I couldn't even have the possibility of notifying you uh, when it was coming out. These are some metal minis, the dark, devout, and heroic of various uh, anthropomorphic animal creatures that you could use in whatever your uh, campaign requires. Uh, Burrows and Badgers is the name of the game, and you can use it for anything you want because, you know, they're minis. It is specifically for undead, witch hunters, and heroes which a lot of people want to play. So I figured I'd let you know. Contact them for whatever late pledge uh, capacity they have, and uh, you'll be able to get to it. They uh, they made some good amount of cash, so I can see why they could think that, oh, maybe if I didn't make this a 10-day campaign, you know, um, maybe I've made 80% or 90% of the money. I get it. But uh, I really wish you guys had had a chance to uh, join in it for yourselves. So you got to do a little bit of the extra work. Click on their name. Click on it. You can get to the link in the description as always. Click on their name. Then go to the messages and just talk to them there on Kickstarter about whether or not you can join in if you need these min miniatures. Same for any campaign you run late on. Before you buy it on eBay, contact the people. You might be able to get it for the regular Kickstarter price just based off their extra inventory. But 3D printing has no inventory, has no expiration, and in this one it has no price tag. You pay what you want if you want this portal. And uh, that's kind of a nice strategy if you are unaware of what you think your uh, market is or how many, uh, what price people would want to pay for something, then uh, a good opportunity would be to go to a big forum like Kickstarter and just say, hey, whatever you guys think is fair. And usually people will pay the minimum, but... Um, it gives you an idea of what the demand is like for your uh, eventual hopeful dream job would be of creating these things. So if you need a portal, you can't beat the price because you get to name it. And if you thought all of those anthropomorphic critters in the beginning were interesting but you didn't know what to do with them, evolutionary mishap will hopefully be something you can use. This is about creating mutants that do martial arts. Uh, I'm sure you can think of four possible reptiles that would fit that situation, and this makes it possible to use them in um, something like D&D or another system if you wanted to. There is a game out there called After the Bomb from Palladium Books that already takes care of this, and it is compatible with their other uh, product, uh, Ninjas and Super Spies. If you wanted to do this, I would just play that game because the combat system for martial arts is far superior. But if you really want to play it with um, a 5e system, some type of DMD system, then uh, this could work for you a lot better. Um, just so you don't have to learn Palladium's kind of complicated system. In Palladium, you can do specific moves, uh, different kicks have different damage uh, abilities. Um, different punches have different damage and grappling and throwing people works a lot better and a lot different. So um, that is just one of the things that you're lacking for the streamlined uh, streamlined simplicity of 5e. And um, but maybe you still want to just do some monk moves and have it with an animal. Evolutionary mishap will at least give you some uh, things to do and have an adventure to go along with it that fits within the rules. But maybe you prefer your 80s references to be like Creep Show, and that's what The Living Temple and Other Tales is about. Um, the farmer is picking up a meteorite, and evil ensues. Sounds like Creep Show to me. You get three new monsters, 
you get a map and a one shot short adventure that you can play in uh, one session and a whodunit adventure that uh, is also kind of short um, but you know it's up to you how long you want to drag it all on out of there I like whodunits I like the idea of um, the cosmic horror aspect of things falling from the sky so uh, it sounds like it could be fun and I like the idea of having one shots because I cannot get a steady group but I might be able to get one or two people to play uh, a game if I've got something ready to go that can be completed within a night and who knows maybe even rope in one of their spouses and Diego Pisa is back and this time it's not with a monster it is with a fire tamer class for 5e or whatever it is that you want to use it for this uh, allows five different paths of uh, using fire I know there is the wildfire druid and there's the way of elements monk uh, this expands on that a little bit. You can also get uh, a bunch of new races if you pick up other products that go along with it, such as an ice elf, um, and they've got different constructs and things. He's coming out with all kinds of content. Uh, there was a bunch of different uh, campaigns, like one every two weeks, I would say, uh, from uh, last year of things that he was creating, and this uh, includes ways to get a lot of that. Uh, there's different archetypes such as librarians and soul keepers and other cool things a magma colossus as an adventure boss um, Lots of things sound pretty cool and the artwork has always been up to snuff with the other types of game or other types of campaigns that come out So if you want to check out what he's got most of it is compatible with more than just one game system so uh, if you're interested in any of it, then I'm sure you'd be happy to sell you everything and then we've got maps from Laidback Dungeon Master, and this is the second version of uh, Maps Your Party Will Die For. This has uh, modular pieces that you can um, kind of like tear out and create whatever dungeon that you feel the need to create. Uh, you can use this type of system with Fog of War because you can lay out the pieces one by one as the characters travel uh, around. Um, that part's pretty cool and uh, it doesn't take up a whole lot of space and honestly doesn't require a lot of forward thinking as long as you don't get yourself stuck into a, um, a dead end, a literal dead end, <laughs> um, then uh, you should be pretty good. So uh, that makes it easy so you don't have to have tons of maps. You can use the same pieces over and over again if you think you need to and you can add things on the fly pretty quickly as well. You don't have to worry about um, remaking things for your virtual tabletop but it is not for a virtual tabletop it is for your home uh, on the table uh, kind of play so uh, you know if you need these type of assets they're available for you they've got tons more and you can see what other things laid back dungeon master ha already has and might have available in inventory if you check them out and then we have night gaunt's nightmare this is call of Cthulhu miniatures you get some shoggoths you get some pulp looking uh, uh investigator types that can fit in whatever type of world that you created for the 20s there's a core set that uh, has professors and cultist types that are hiding in masks and uh, people that are escaping from prison and all that kind of cool stuff things that will set off a story really well and uh, Shoggoths, if you have not seen the Lovecraft Country HBO series, episode one, it will make you love Shoggoths. So, uh, yeah, they, they, it's pretty amazing, the implementation there. I had a lot of fun watching it, so, uh, you know, just putting that off for you. And uh, the models look pretty cool. I'm sure they'd be fun to paint. I've got a bunch of uh, this era stuff all ready to go. Um, to in the paint queue so I don't need these right now but uh, the other cool thing that they've got are night gaunts and I've been reading the latest Arkham Horror uh, novella and I'm pretty sure it's about night gaunts so uh, you know just interesting how they represent them in the book and you now we've got some uh, available here you don't always see them as the, the enemies and they do make pretty neat enemies and can confuse people from coming from the sky maybe you're burned out on the past and you want to start looking towards the future this is death in space this is a rules light rpg that is in a science fiction setting 
And the great thing about Rules Light is it, you don't have to learn a lot of rules. <laughs> so you uh, can be playing whatever your regular game is and you just need a break and you want to change a setting, then uh, you can go into Death and Space and jump in pretty quickly and have all of the grimy blue collar things that uh, were intended for movies like Alien uh, out in the mining colonies of weird things that they find. And one of the neat deals that they've created that goes along with the book to make it extra spacey is you get a hologram cover. Um, I know it was a big thing in the 80s, but it felt like the future. Uh, I don't think it has anything to do with Morkborg, although the uh, yellow and black would make you think that. Um, so just keep that in part in mind. It is not trying... Well, maybe they are trying to fool you to think it's Morkborg, but it's not necessarily going to be the case. And uh, it's just trying to catch your eye into playing a, uh, a this new system. So it's got 60 different modules for the spacecraft. So if you're into that kind of thing, you can set up your own ship. You got to do repairs. You got to do all that kind of crazy stuff. You don't have to think about if you're just dealing with horses and carts. But uh, it could be a lot of fun for somebody who wants to change a pace in space. And maybe you need some just generic D&D &D type figures. This is random dungeon encounters. Um, they probably should have chosen a different name because it would confuse people. This is about minis. This is not a book on encounters. Uh, it's got your basic beholder and a couple of other uh, useful rat people, uh, goblin looking guys, possibly trolls, um, little insectoid people, things that you would encounter like a mummy if you're just doing a, re a regular random uh, event. Um, they should be all in the SRD, that kind of thing. So whatever system that you're going to play, uh, they will typically have some of these type of monsters or something that you can easily use. One of these eight folks in. They're all metal. That's why it's all in green wax. And uh, if you don't like plastic, maybe you'll buy these because you like metal. And if you're playing into an adventure and you needed a lighthouse, that's what this is. It comes apart, as you can see. Uh, there are two figures that could go along with it to be keepers. And uh, this will let you play in any coastal city uh, or any other reason why you might have a, white, a lighthouse. Um, I don't know. It just says, hey, there could be a persistent danger here. Maybe, um, I don't know, there's like airships or something in your campaign and there's pockets of uh, I don't know uh, those uh, fire force things from um, like uh, lava geysers or whatever the, the case may be and you need a lighthouse to protect people from flying into it or um, running into it in land sea whatever then maybe this will work for you print it out fairly cheap and then we have bases these are some nice looking bases you can resin print out and use for whatever wargaming purposes you need. Uh, because of the nature of um, them being discs, then I don't really worry as much on this type of stuff about chipping and breaking uh, as I do about regular minis um, for resin printing. So uh, yeah, go to town on it. You can have uh, a nice um, uh, customized base for whatever Warhammer uh, or other game that you might uh, have uh, that will let you tell your minis apart if you move them already. Um, it catches the eye pretty easy to have a unique base if you're not going to use colors or something else to differentiate them. If their bodies are uniform, it's kind of hard to tell. Like, did I move this one already? If you've got dozens of them already on the table. And uh, the bases, you know, just also tell your personality. So... It's nice to be able to have a bunch of those, and if they've got all these themes, as you can see there on the right, they are themed to a particular type, then you can have um, many available uh, for your army, and uh, it, you know we won't have to get bored painting the same thing over and over and over again, or racking your brain saying, what kind of base should I build here? And then we have the Hunt for Sunblade Tower, the idea being there's a missing explorer, a mythical tower, and then you get a hex adventure with new creatures, challenges, and uh, some magic items. So it's pretty cool. The artwork is really neat. They've got uh, some pretty decent portrait photography that they've used, as well as some regular old, um, you know, paintbrush type of uh, artwork created. They've uh, decided to make it um, very inclusive. 
uh, as part of their um, mission, as you can see by the name of the company. But that doesn't mean that you have to play it a particular way or don't. Um, the idea is uh, everybody is not playing the label of their sexuality, but instead playing a character and whatever they happen to be, they happen to be. Uh, so there you go. Something inclusive for everybody, hopefully. And um, they are also offering for free, as part of the stretch goals, a copy of the research notes of the person that created the Sunblade Tower. Uh, and that's a neat idea to have like a little um, extra book to go along with the book. And if you like the photography approach and the artwork and all the cool stuff you can see there on the right, if you click on the page you can see the photography. Because I don't include pictures of people anymore in the episodes because that just might get you in trouble in the future with YouTube. If you like those people to have big eyes and small mouths, that's what Anime 5e is all about. This is uh, bringing the world of BESM, which stands for Big Eye Small Mouth, to 5th edition. So a lot of people like both. Uh, they like the anime art style, they like the anime and manga stories, and they like Dungeons and Dragons and would like to combine them. So that's what's been included here. Dungeons & Dragons fits a uh, more Western um, storytelling uh, setup, the way the creatures are made and the, the world and everything fits more, like things you'll find in Tolkien specifically, um, which caught them suit early on. But uh, that may not be the thing that you're looking for in your game. You may want something that um, fits more of that Eastern philosophy and uh, world for uh, manga, including 14 new races and classes. 14 new races, 14 new classes, and 70 uh, different attribute features that can be included, and dozens of flaws, proficiencies, and other things that are specific to the world of anime and manga that uh, may make your game more exciting. You don't have to pick one or the other. You can combine them because it's your rules. It's your game. You can do whatever you want. Um, and it just helps you create those characters and meld them together. But if you can't get a group together, maybe you'll try this solo adventure for a cleric. This is called Hope Not Lost. And um, yeah, the RPG systems in general, 5th edition is not necessarily created uh, for solo play. Uh, but everybody that has been a dungeon master uh, knows that you can easily get stuck being the forever dungeon master and maybe you just wanted to play uh, yourself to see what it's like as a player to become better at your job. And uh, that's what this system is for. This is the second adventure in it. If you want to try another one, you can. Um, the idea here is you are a cleric, you're a priest, you're someone who is part of an order that um, is in service to a god and that church is sending you out on a mission. Uh, there's four different encounters uh, based on what you need to do in the game and I mean it's an interesting concept. Uh, I don't think it's particularly tied to any one god but it might be. Um, they didn't say which if it was Helm or Alm or whoever it was in the um, description here and maybe that is required uh, for copyright purposes they not do that but uh, it, it is interesting and it does help you bring closer to the lore I know lore just badass models and her on quest is uh, pre-supported STLs you can see here they look pretty badass so if you need something for a particular NPC or your own character and you're not getting it from uh, the other op op options that are available other places there are demons as well as uh, NPC type characters, rangers, everybody's in a cool action pose and that will help bring people to the table more often, but obviously you are going to need resin. Watch out for the big axes and things that are sticking out there because they are on little tiny stocks. You don't want to break them, so have your players be trained up on how not to break things by picking stuff up by the base and uh, you will be rewarded for having a really cool um, uh, thing that you can paint up and uh, make your own however you'd like or make as many as you'd like because you know you buy it you print it you can make as many as you think you need 
then uh, you can ch also challenge yourself to painting something super awesome because you can just toss the uh, mini afterwards and uh, print off a new one if you screw it up. So that is uh, some uh, good reason for you to pick something up like this is it's got uh, dynamic posing. You can try it out and if you don't like it, you can just keep painting over and over and over again or you can get a new one printed out for cheap and paint it again yourself and get better. And then if you just want some flair, spellbook keychains. So you can keep your dice in them uh, or your mini or whatever you want to do and then hopefully you won't lose your keys because you got a big chunk in uh, keychain to go along with it. They have a couple different sizes of the things that they've created before, spell books that are also in that uh, book size. It is up to you if your aesthetic requires you to be able to uh, carry this stuff around and always have your character with you, then uh, maybe this will help fill that uh, necess necessary uh, aspect of your own personal aesthetic uh, by keeping them around. They look pretty cool, but uh, if the keychain's too big, then you can't really use it as a keychain because it's not going to fit in your pocket, right? But if you want something more archaeological and Indiana Drones-ish, then maybe you want Trinity Continuum. Um, the idea here is you get pulp action, just like you'd get in Indiana Jones, but in your RPG setting. The idea is it has been around in digital form for a while, and now Richard Thomas would like to bring it to print so that bookstores and other places can pick it up and more people can see it. Um, this includes 250 plus pages of all of the adventures and things that they've created so far. There are uh, uh, seven chapters that they're outlining with an appendix on the settings. It's anachronistic in the sense that, uh, as you can see, there's dinosaurs and people. There's um, like uh, machines attacking cities and all that kind of stuff as well as uh, a lady in a nightgown that could be from anywhere in the last 500 years, let's say, uh, reading a book. Uh, whenever the, um, I don't know, the, the, the Gutenberg uh, printing press was created from then up to now, uh, different types of uh, superhero-esque individuals and all that kind of business also available however you want to play your adventuring you can do it here with someone who has been around for a very long time and uh, get a printed copy finally. And maybe you want some nice dice. This is Libra Arcana. They are doing the fire and ice swirls and their new resin line. Uh, you can read them, which is awesome. Always need you to have high contrast to be able to tell what's going on. But they have uh, the neat little flame effects with soot as well, as you can see on the right. And then the ice looking ones with the blue on the left. If you need uh, some type of dice for your various creations, maybe you did get the Diego Pisa one with the uh, fire creator and you want some dice to go along with it to tell either the character apart or just have a little flair, this might help you. And then we have Monsters from the Public Domain. If you are a fan of old sci-fi movies uh, and you always wanted to have a giant Gila monster or some other crazy thing that is in one of those... Uh, Elvira or um, jo uh, Joe Briggs. Uh, there's a bunch of folks that did bad movie night um, uh, types of movies and they would do commentary over them because they were public domain and didn't require a bunch of extra licensing fees in order to play them. And that is a great feeling. I remember growing up uh, watching Elvira and uh, maybe that says a lot about how uh, I eventually formed <laughs> um, for my preferences in this world, but uh, you know the the monsters and sea creatures and uh, giant ants and uh, killer shrews and all that kind of business, you may want to include in your game um, for the nostalgia or just because it's interesting and you want something that is familiar uh, and awesome that uh, you know, somebody else already created. But now the time enough has passed and you can throw that into your game and uh, this will help you do it. And maybe you want sprawling hex maps but uh, you want them to be able to change on the fly. Magnets can help you do that and that's what these STL files are for. You print them off, you pop in your magnet and uh, you can make the map whatever it is that you want it to be. They say it's for Battletech but 
there's no limit on what games you want to use it for. It just happens to be sized for Battletech. And, uh, you know, have a good time. And then if you feel like your dice are cursed, perhaps you want the not cursed dice. These are all resin, but they're made to look like gemstones. And they have nice high contrast, so you can read them, which is pretty cool. And uh, sharp edges, if that's your thing. I still think that, you know, the sharp edge deal, uh, I think it just makes it so that it rolls less frequently. So it's, uh, you know, however you prefer your, your table to run. Or, uh, you know, you like stabbing yourself like a Lego when <laughs> you step on it eventually. That part's up to you. Um, but yeah, it's uh, not going to help you if you have cursed players, only if you don't want cursed dice. So keep that part in mind. And uh, they're not out to get you. They're just, you know, pieces of plastic. Then if you want to try something new, how about a GM-less um, campaign from the Goblin perspective? It's uh, an interesting idea, and like I was saying before, Forever GMs also want to be players and get some new ideas. There's um, a lot of people out there that may also just want to GM, and they don't know how to do it yet, and they want some guidance, and they want to play an adventure with the people that they want to be in their RPG group, but they don't know what to do, they don't know where to start. This is an interesting way to do that. You can have these GMless uh, storybooks guide you through, and then you might find that you want to be the DM, you, or maybe you, another player will find that they would right, like to be the one making those decisions. And uh, at least you can grow and enjoy it together. Um, it is particularly made for a one-shot session, so if you are interested in uh playing RPG games but you haven't figured out the party mix just yet then uh, maybe get started with something like this you guys can all get together and then you can decide if you want to go further and keep going with more campaigns and then if you like music puns you can try rock and roll there is a reason that they are done in the Rolling Stone font it's because they have uh, adventures created to feel like music um, such as Carly Faye Jepsen there on the cover, um, other ideas based on either the names of, uh, the, uh, the music themselves, uh, the names of the songs, Just looking for the word song, found that, or album or uh, band or whatever. Um, there's a bunch of different adventures thrown into these books. I think it's an interesting way to, uh, include more people. They've got... Uh, Adventures inspired by Taylor Swift, R.E.M., Warren Zevon, Clear, Credence Clearwater, The Spice Girls, and more. So there's a wide variety of folks that you can get uh, involved here. And um, some people that you wouldn't normally expect to play might if uh, you had something that they were familiar with, such as music that they like. And then we have uh, Sin for the Spire RPG. This is a fantasy RPG that takes place in a mile-high city. I don't think it's particularly Denver, but it could be. <laughs> um, it has a ministry of our hidden mistress, a high elf cruel people, and uh, other crazy things that are going on along with the uh, typical crime and punishments of uh, any city. The idea here is... You've got uh, the gutter cleric and a mortician executioner as uh, part of the um, classes you can bring to this Spire RPG and three brand new adventures to go along with those characters. It sounds pretty neat. Uh, I like the Darkest Dungeon style artwork that's going along here. And if uh, you're interested in that and that's what evokes your imagination, then uh, check it out. Um, I don't think it's necessarily uh, too tied. I, I know it's not uh, D and D, but if it's close enough, uh, because of the fantasy elements and the uh, ideas of how the mechanics uh, are, uh, so, so how conflict is sorted out, you shouldn't have too much difficulty playing a new game if uh, you're used to playing RPGs. Moving on to a more modern context, we have Bobby's Baddies and Bootnecks. These are metal models for law enforcement and other types of uh, zombie fighters, if you want them to be. Folks that use guns, uh, more military style weapons. Um, they are not uh, made to look perfectly like people <laughs> as far 
as the anatomy goes there's a little more chunk to them and that's because they are being made uh, on a small scale I mean you're gonna have to have some uh, allowances for uh, just the medium and what it requires but otherwise they look pretty darn good especially for metal if uh, you need this kind of work, if you need this type of models, if you've got other games, war games, skirmishes, whatever you uh, want to go along with it, uh, or even uh, Delta Green, is that the one I'm thinking of? My mind's mush. But whatever the case is, if you need something uh, more modern, then these will help you out quite a bit, especially if you need law enforcement. And then there's a copy-paste error, and I put this in the wrong episode. This is actually a card game called Calling All Nights. And I'd already recorded the regular gaming episode before this one, so uh, you know, sorry for them if they didn't get to see as many eyeballs as the uh, regular gaming episode gets. But hey, it's free advertising either way. You are going to be fighting Munchkin style, going through a dungeon that uh, you set up and create. There is a deck full of 30 monsters, and you're going to bet on whether or not you can make it. Uh, so that part is pretty cool. Um, yeah, if you are already playing fantasy style adventures, then maybe this is a game that uh, will help you um, stay within that uh, that style, especially when uh, someone can't make it that week, and um, you just want to play another game that fits the or scratches the itch. You still want to fight dragons and ghosts and goblins and all that kind of cool stuff. You can play a game like this in between, and then next week we'll continue your campaign. The artwork is all pretty cool. It has uh, that storybook style um, and feel that goes along with it. And uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Next we have Fall of Myth. This is the Treason book. And uh, it's already available out there on uh, Roll20 and Drive Through RPG in the, the world of Fall of Myth. They have Mythos Manor, The Siege, and Autium, or Autum, Atium, however you want to pronounce it. There's a lot of vowels all strung together. Anyway, the uh, idea is it's a uh, 5e compatible adventure. You can take four characters of 7th level, so you'll all have uh, a lot of your skills and spells and things already uh, getting to get started. And um, this is a new story within that series. If you want to check it out, you can check out the reviews of the previous episodes. You can see the art is all high quality as what you would expect from uh, things that of you know, the current world of D&D. They have maps and all that also pretty well made to the same quality level. It's just a matter of do you like the story? Do you want to check it out? Give it a go. Take a look. And uh, they've been putting in a lot of effort. If they made it to this many in the series, it's because people are picking it up. People are buying it. And uh, they're paying the artists. So uh, that is a good indicator that people have been coming back. And you might want to check them out yourself. Then we have Sinister Cities Road to Perdition. This is flooring and sometimes you want to have a nice uh, thing to put your base on and uh, you're willing to print it out for yourself you can have terrain you can have scatter stuff all thrown in there you get a free sample here of a um, some type of altar that you can put in there the thing about floors they last a long time so it can fit in multiple time periods depending on what type of game you've got some of them look fairly futuristic, and some of them could be rusted out and ancient. It's, if this is your post-apocalypse, if this is your shiny new future, you paint it however you like it. And uh, this is going to make it a little bit more immersive. So it's not just your tabletop or a flat map. You can uh, expand into uh, more areas, conditions, and um, set yourself up however you like in uh, a very modular term, because they're all going to be uh, square uh, sized about the same. You can build whatever dungeon you need and uh, fit a couple of minis on each one. But if uh, hexes is more your thing, then Talisman Saber Terrain has 3D printable hexes that have lots of different character to go along with them as well. If uh, you need some stone roads or other types of uh, things compatible with open lock, then uh, you can pick it up here. The idea here is uh, hex based games like Gloomhaven, this will work out pretty well. Uh, that's not a bad idea. Gloomhaven sold a lot, and some people really, really enjoy the game. Frosthaven's coming out, and if you pick something up like this, maybe you'll be able to use the 3D terrain here in a game like Frosthaven when it eventually comes out, or, you know, just play regular hex adventures that you like. 
And then we have googly eye dice. And these are those little plastic uh, eyeballs that uh, you see on puppets and things, but tossed into the resin and it just kind of floats around. I do not know how this will affect the balance of the dice, um, especially if it's stuck in a single plane. As the little disc moves back and forth, it may affect slightly the way that it rolls. Um, may, I'm not sure, probably not enough to be perceptible, but uh, it's got the red and the white and the black all thrown together, so they look a little bloodshot. I say it would work pretty well for a spellcaster, uh, especially a warlock or somebody that uh, might have some necromantic um, things going on and uh, it would fit pretty well. You make the decision for yourself how well you feel about it, but I think it's a pretty cool idea. And like I said, if you're gonna be playing Halloween theme, then uh, this is a good way to um, have some eyeball based dice, why not? And I do some painting episodes every once in a while and you guys can see how I'm a mediocre painter that just gets the job done. But if you want something done by someone who's really good at it, then uh, maybe you want to learn from one of the masters. These are four famous artists that are creating a series for you in 8K with uh, all the color and all the, the best reproduction possible for you to learn the various skills you need to make their style of art. Um, if you want to you can click on the link and then you can see all of the different sculpts that uh, these folks have done this includes your favorite games such as kingdom death this includes uh, all of the different uh, tabletop games that are out there these people are highly sought after uh, both sculptors and painters so um, yeah if you wanted to see how they do it when you look at the 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 final images like how do they um, get a certain type of blend how do they get certain colors how do they get the things to stick how do they even just think about how to approach certain types of materials this is an opportunity for you to find all of that out and uh, pick up some videos to go along with it then we have mushroom madness mycelium madness fungal adventures i had a movie based on uh, fungal zombies that it came or we wrote it in 2010 and it came out in 2013. Uh, they are a really good source of inspiration that is highly underutilized. If you listen to the Joe Rogan podcast, he has a bunch of uh, crazy people on there that are um, mycology experts. But uh, yeah, they've spent a little bit too much time uh, eating the mushrooms. <laughs> and they go a little wacky on it uh, at times. But that will make them perfect for storytelling in a weird uh, fantasy adventure world since reality has no real concept back there. Mycelium Madness will take you into those dark uh, areas where um, the little mushrooms are going to give off their spores and take over your brain and all that kind of fun stuff. And uh, that is a great concept. So um, it, uh, there's a lot of... Uh, myconoids and fungal zombies and fungal um, creatures that you can pick up in uh, lots of different uh, either uh, the resin campaigns that we've put out or highlighted in the past or uh, just stuff like um, dark reach from reaper bones and use it have a good time it's a whole new different type of adventure and a whole different type of uh, enemy to it to have to deal with and then, if you are tired of playing the same RPG over and over again, that's what Odd Jobs is helping to stop. It is a book full of micro settings. You are intended to play through the campaign having an entirely different world in a month. So you have a ghost ship. You can get an early version of right now if you wanted to download it. And then you have twisted rails. So you can be out there, um, I guess, as a hobo, not far to Bermuda. Uh, Guardians, Atlantis City, Dusk Hollow PD, uh, Missing in Christmas, Primetime Coliseum, and Wizard Staff, Startup Culture, and uh, others that go along with it. Those are the names of the different adventures. They take place in different times. They take place in different environments with different types of characters. It's made to just be different and not just one shots but one month shots so you can have a series of adventures but you don't have to have a huge investment and then we have terrain ruins of ashmore they are the ruins of anywhere you want them to be 
They are various buildings, towers, and things that have fallen over due to time, war, whatever you want to use it as. Uh, you could push it into um, a more modern uh, day uh, finding a weird ruin. They're more European looking uh, castles and things though. So I would say it fits better in fantasy. You use it however you like, even if you just want it for a diorama, that kind of thing. Um, different uh, open concepts of uh, stairs and um, towers and little uh, bailey buildings and all that kind of fun stuff. Available here however you want to set it up and uh, print it however you like because uh, I think, yeah, these are all 3D printable. So if you had an FDM printer, then you can make them nice and cheap. Uh, and resin printers, if uh, you have one big enough, then you should be able to make these pieces as well. And then we have the Vessel Art and Translation Fund. Um, the idea here is eventually this game will come out for free on uh, Drive-Thru RPG. It is a mix of fantasy and sci-fi elements. Um, it's going to contain uh, all of the things already created for this game that you can check out uh, but the thing is they can't afford to pay artists and uh, they can't afford to pay translators so they're trying to raise two thousand dollars to do that um, it's up to you if you're just gonna wait and see if you can get the game uh, text only then uh, maybe in the future you can pick it up that parts up to you it's hard to say that um, you know they're just gonna fund the uh, art or one component rather than offering a whole complete uh, deal. I tried to do the same thing when I was making my movie to get a, a different third act created. We wanted to raise some extra money to be able to you know get uh, locations and a little bit more time with our, our folks but um, the Kickstarter said no because it wasn't uh, a complete product. It was uh, too much of a ethereal concept um, and it's very much like with this uh, when is about maybe they've changed the rules or there's just something different about having a book available um, whatever the case is uh, you can check it out and take a look at the book and play it in the future for free and then we have a different type of entertainment this is Zodiac Miniatures um, you can paint, print these off in whatever resin color you like but they've created a light and dark version so uh, you can have the bestial and dark zodiacs to go along with whatever creatures you feel fit your world. Um, it will take a zodiac killer to a whole new level if you're out there hunting these guys as monsters. And uh, as you can see, there are uh, the various humanoids, uh, such as the Ares there, that has the sheep head but the body of a woman. Um, it's an interesting concept and the sculpts look pretty neat it's just kind of hard to fit them into a world you're gonna have to create the creatures for yourself in uh, um, maybe they'd make great goddesses or forms of a god something similar to uh, rhyme of the ice maiden but in a different context i think it'd be a neat story hook uh even if a uh, circle of the stars druid how would you affect it if they're also working with constellations so ideas are abound and uh, now you'll have some uh, resin minis to go along with it if uh, you got a printer. And if you're really not sure where your story is going, then spiral dice may help you. This is a bunch of different symbols that aren't necessarily numbers. Um, that can be related to numbers, but it depends on you. Uh, you can set up different combos. You can set up different storytelling. Uh, it's just meant to be something symbolic there are blanks um, you can create the game however you like there are a bunch of different colors as you can see there uh, available it is something I'm putting out there it's not for everybody but it is um, got some they do have some suggestions on how to utilize the uh, the dice uh, being completely different weird whatever type of uh, bonus system you want to create Maybe it's for the people that are crafters out there. For other people that need numbers, then you have the Heavy Metal Dice Collection. Lots of different colors. Um, they're themed around various characters, um, such as, you can see there's Barbarian, Beholder, Cleric. They've got lots of different versions. They have, uh, like the Barbarian there has a, a metal cage around it with little spikes. It comes in red, so you can get that. They've got one for everybody. 
even if you just like the color uh, or you like the idea of the shapes, you don't necessarily have to pick them up um, based on the name of the character that it's that represents it. You can just like the color and use it for yourself. Um, there are dozens of different uh, color combinations that go along with it. They're not um, as expensive as I've seen a lot of other uh, types of dice of this variety. 50 bucks for a seven piece set, uh, 60 for two six pieces of D6s. It really just depends on if you want the polyhedrals or not. The little cages, they take a lot of work and extra paint. However, they look nice and there's a lot of variety. So it's worth at least taking a look if your wallet can handle the hit. And that's it for me. My voice can take no more. I uh, hope you guys have a good one. And uh, like I said, you can check out the RPG episode if you haven't already. Um, the episodes have so, been so jam-packed. I uh, haven't had any voice left to put the art stuff on there. But I've been painting all kinds of things. I finished painting Horrified uh, with the Universal Monster game and all my Hellboy stuff. I continue to work through the stragglers, and I think I'm going to start on some Reaper Bones. Uh, I bought set four a few years ago, and I've only painted a couple models. And, uh, you know, just trying to get through the rest of them to uh, not have to sit there and stare at a bunch of gray plastic that could be looking nice and beautiful. And testing myself. Uh, one of those things you notice, the more you paint, the faster you get, and the less you spend sitting there fumbling over decisions. Um, that don't really matter because you can just paint it over if you don't like it. Uh, I hope you guys have a nice spring holiday, whatever it is uh, that you celebrate. And uh, have yourself some nice food and some nice company. And hopefully some nice gaming. You guys have a good one.